Welcome back. In this video, we're going to dive into a specific uh, harvest system model called the fixed quota harvest. So this is just um, building on our last video where we talked about how we add harvest to the logistic growth model. And here we're going to add a specific harvest approach called the fixed quota. So if you remember in the previous um, version of this, uh, there was our discrete logistic growth curve, which says the population in the future is the population right now, uh, plus some growth that's affected by the growth rate and the carrying capacity, uh, minus some harvest that was time dependent, H sub T. Here we've decided uh, that the simplest way of representing that harvest is to assume that it's constant through time. So this is called a fixed quota harvest, this capital Q is quota. So if the same number of individuals are harvested from the population over each time period, such as a, a year, uh, these are these fixed quotas are sometimes called you know catch limits or bag limits, and they set set a uh, you know upper bounds, and then total number of individuals can be can be harvested uh, from a population, usually across uh, the whole across different individuals who are participating in the harvest. So uh, there needs to be some way of reporting how much uh, each uh, individual who's, who's part of the harvest has taken at any point in time. Um, okay, so the harvest is a constant equal to quota, and then that needs to be set uh, by resource managers uh, to be some number between zero and K. You can't harvest more than 100% of the population. Uh, and it's quite often set, or quite, you know, often, yeah, set to the maximum sustainable yield, where you can see that there would be a, a strong incentive for many managers to set this quota uh, closer to the maximum sustainable yield. So how does the addition of this uh, fixed quota affect the equilibria and the stability in this system, which, you know, seems like a esoteric mathematical questions, but the, those equilibrium and stability really are, are pretty key to determining whether the population is going to be viable or not. Because if we have a stable equilibrium, we're predicting the population will uh, go there. And hopefully that is a stable equilibrium that it has the species still existing at some sustainable level. Okay, so we're gonna, we've added this yield curve so we have our growth curve in blue. We've added this yield curve in pink. And now we need to ask, what would the uh, equilibrium population be if we started at the carrying capacity 2000, if we started at half the carrying capacity 1000, or if the population is currently fairly depressed at 100, say it had been overfished, and now we're instituting a fixed quota system. Um, so let's walk through that. So first, let's note where the two equilibria are. So when we just were looking at the growth curve by itself, the equilibrium was when the growth rate equals zero, the DNDT equals zero. Now, when we're looking at harvest systems, the equilibrium, as we showed in the last video, is, is when the growth rate equals the harvest rate. And so we have two equilibria marked by these two dashed lines. Next, if we start at the carrying capacity, 2000, and we've been put this fixed quota in, uh, at 2000, the harvest rate is higher than the growth rate. And so the population will tend to decline, indicated by this blue arrow. If we start at, the at half the carrying capacity at 1000, at that point, the growth curve is higher than the uh, quota. And so the population will tend to increase. And will tend to increase at any point uh, between these two equilibria, because at all those these points in between the equilibria, uh, the growth curve is higher than the uh, quota. So it's higher than the harvest. So if that's true, then we have a, a prediction of a stable equilibrium up here at this upper equilibrium. Finally, if we start off, if we're currently at 100 individuals, uh, our harvest is going to be higher than our growth rate. 
uh, which means we're going to tend to decline. So that means this fixed quota system has an unstable equilibrium that's uh, at a positive value. And, and that's uh, something that should be concerning because it means that there is a threshold population size uh, below which the population will, will collapse. It'll be we go into kind of what's known as a death spiral. The population will decline faster and faster because every year uh, the harvest stays the same, uh, but the amount that it can grow back gets smaller and smaller. So it's going to uh, you know, rapidly decline towards extinction. Okay, so that's that's the fixed quota system. It has some clear disadvantages, um, and you can also imagine we'll we'll come back to this later. The, the the advantages are exacerbated when you acknowledge that there's going to be uncertainty in the growth curve, in any real model. This is estimated with uncertainty, and there's going to be uncertainty, not with what you set the quota to be, but with uh, what was actually reported. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind with all these harvest systems. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of these harvest uh, approaches, harvest models, uh, we're pre presenting a simple version that does not have any explicit accounting for, for sort of some sort of cheating or under-reporting, which would mean that the, uh, quite often the, the actual harvest could be higher than the reported quota. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So given that this, this fixed quota system has this uh, undesirable risk of uh, population collapse threshold, uh, we're going to, in our next video, talk about an alternative uh, harvest system called the fixed effort harvest. Thanks.